Okay, with this we complete the course Thinking in Angular. I really hope we have achieved the objective, which is to get you to think in this unique, different way when it comes to building Angular applications. We have applied this concept in a lot of different exercises, as well as looked at what Angular provides for us. The idea of creating a model and modifying the model and wiring it to the view so that the view automatically updates is a fundamental way of thinking for you to be building Angular applications. Now that we are at the end of this course, I should let you know that we have just scratched the surface of Angular. Angular 1 is a fairly complex framework. It's fairly vast is what I would say. There are a lot of concepts. Uh, not It's not deep in terms of complexity, but it has a lot of breadth to it. So there are a lot of different concepts that you'll have to learn. So here are some of the next steps. Angular has something called services, which let you create reusable code components that can be used in multiple different places. So it's important for you to understand what services are, how to create services, and how to use some of the existing services. One of the most popular services that you'll be using is a dollar HTTP service, which lets you make REST API calls. Uh, the to-do app that we built in this uh, course is really a browser-only app, right? You build your to-do applications and you click the refresh button, it's all gone, right? It's all in memory. What you'd ideally like to do is persist this on a server somewhere. And in order to get data from a server or to send data to the server, you'll have to work with the REST API calls in Angular. In order to do that, you definitely need the $HTTP service. That service lets you make HTTP calls. And uh, in order to understand how to use HTTP service, you also need to understand what promises are. So these are the three concepts which kind of go together. Services, $HTTP, and promises. So this is very, very important. I definitely encourage you to learn more about this. Next thing you would have to learn is creating directives and components. I started talking about Angular in this course and I mentioned how um, Angular has the model of declarative programming rather than imperative programming. You don't write the steps you need to be executed. What you actually do is build these components. We've been using some of the components that Angular provides, but we haven't created a component in this course. That is again vital for you to be taking full advantage of the Angular power. You need to be able to create new components and use them in multiple places. And in order to create components, you'll need to learn what components and directives are and how to create them. Next, I'd encourage you to look at unit testing. Angular is very, very flexible when it comes to unit testing. Compared to some other frameworks, Angular separates the code from the view. So when you're writing code, you don't really have dependency on the view. You look at your Angular code that you've written so far. There's really nothing in that code that tells you what the view is that's going to be using it. The view hooks into the model, but the model and the controller doesn't really depend on the view, which makes testing super easy. Testing in Angular is another important concept for you to learn. You use frameworks like Jasmine and Protractor in order to test. Jasmine for unit testing and Protractor for integration testing. This is again another important concept for you to learn when you're learning Angular. So these are some starting points to further your journey of learning Angular. I'll try to make courses for these topics, and once the course is ready, I'm going to link it to this. I cannot promise that I'm going to make courses for all of these, but I will definitely try. So if you really, really need any of these courses on Java Brains, send me a message and let me know which one. And if enough people request it, I'm going to prioritize that and try to make a course sooner. So with this, we conclude the course Thinking in Angular. I hope this was helpful. Good luck and have fun playing with Angular 1.